I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ears, the Son of God discloses and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known okay I'm standing outside of my fence and I want to show you all how tall this is a six foot privacy fence so this is about seven and a half feet this texas star hibiscus this is the white variety that i planted a few years ago the seeds didn't come up then the, then they they germinated like two years later so this is the first year that i've had full size uh healthy flowers last year we only got a a couple that didn't look real pretty but anyway you can see i'm gonna go closer you can see it has a lot of seed pods next year i'll be able to share these seeds okay. this is the side of my driveway and i just want to show you all how uh much the concord grapes have grown all the way cascading over the fence and right over here is where i grow right there all of the muscadines and i'm gonna walk around Stand there, Bria. Stand up against the vines so they can see how tall they are. And wow. even. They're so taller than me. Yep, these. and here is some of the elderberries. The last time. Bush. They I'm were gonna not this tall. take some cuttings from the elderberries uh, and uh, give them away and sell them too. Okay. Just want to show you the outside of the driveway and the privacy fence, and now I'm gonna go inside and share what's growing on in the fence. Okay, I wanna show you the insect netting over here on all of these garden beds, elevated garden beds and grow boxes, and right here, I'm gonna take the netting off because we're gonna get a lot of rain, and that'll give me opportunity to spray after the rain and put them back on. So we're gonna just drape them over to one side, okay guys? Okay. All right. Okay guys, look. Look at the damage. I'm so glad we took that netting off all across there. See right here? Oh, my God. Yeah. Look at all the holes in So we got some worms in here. So cabbage moths got in here, and they've been eating up our red Russian kale. So we're going to spray this really good with neem oil. I just saw a flying insect. There's a lot of holes in there. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So we're happy that we took this off right yes so we can see what's going on brian look over there move that netting back to the ground right here yes put it put it on the ground look at the fence brian the fence right here thank you sweetie put it down and look at that daikon uh it's like the yellow weeds i can't think of the name of chicory chicory italian chicory but yeah, we're gonna, as soon as we finish this video, before it rains, we're gonna come out and we're gonna spray this real good. I'm glad we took this off. My instinct told me, take every, the cover off of everything so we can see how everything is and let the rain come in really well, even though it'll penetrate the insect barrier there. Um, what'd you say? Um, if you stink to your instincts, that could include your guts. Yeah, your gut feeling, instinct, right. If the instinct tell you to do something, if it's right, do it. Now, if the instinct tell you to do something wrong, don't do that and you'll get in trouble, okay? But everything is growing really well, guys. I'm very, very pleased. Okay, let's show you some of the grow boxes. Okay, so you can see these last two boxes that I uh, filled with our seedlings. They're doing really good. We didn't get any insect damage. Okay, I think that might have been wind damage, but everything is growing well. You see the garlic is coming up really nice. Okay, let's look over here. The red mustards, we can be harvesting some of it soon. Cabbage. Wow. I didn't label anything because I kind of like know what stuff is. I've been, you know, gardening a long time. And you guys will be like me. Once, put this in the compost, Bria. 
Is this the compost? The orange bucket, the five gallon orange bucket, remember? That one? Yes. So you're gonna go around that way and hold up the orange bucket. Bring it back over here so we can see. Yes, right there, put the, put the weeds in there. And right here, we see some weeds, Brian. You wanna pull them out right here? One, two, three. And I just accidentally broke this, so I'll put this in my salad. Just pull them straight out. Here, right here, baby. Okay, this so small. I'll give you some, Bria. You can take that one, Bria. Do this one, Bria. It's so small. Yeah, they're small. We get the weeds out now before they get big. Okay, come here, Brian. These are two more small ones. Just pull these out. Here's some grass. We don't want that. Pull that out, Bria. Good job. Let's put it in the compost. Okay, now let's go over here. These were the last two boxes we did. Everything's looking good. We're still going to miss them with a little neem oil and water. Now, check this out. This was the first box that I did that had the peas. Wow, my gosh. Yeah, aren't they beautiful? Yeah, there's lots of peas. Lots of peas. We're gonna, we're gonna let them get real fat and dry. It's got They big. taste better. These are pigeon peas or cow peas, and they are looking fabulous. Look at all of these yeah, peas. Yeah, it's getting as big as the as the okra we found they, yesterday. They grow, yeah, they grow, as long, yeah. as long. They're growing real big. Growing really big. It's, this is oh. wonderful you all to see this because you saw me plant the seeds and put them inside of here so you'll know <laughs> that you can do this too when you get older, right? Yeah, yeah. I see a fat one right here. I see a fat one? Yeah. Hold it up. Wow. Let's see. Let's get it close up on it, Brian. Yeah. There's one. Bria has a fat one and Brian saw a really fat one. Yeah, we don't want to break it off. We want to go ahead and let them get really big. And then we're going to cook some, and I'm going to make you all my famous corn this. muffins that you like. Right, Brian? Yeah, yeah corn. Then I'm going to look at this. But they're not going to be out corn muffins. I use almond meal now. Don't 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 break it off, Bria. Good job. Corn bread. Okay, yes. Come around here, Brian. My big boy, I need you to pull this out of here. It's probably a squash seed or something. We don't want that growing right now. And then here's one right here. There's two of them there. Pull it out. There's one. They're kind of hard to pull. Yeah, but just go ahead and get a good grip on it right here. See my finger? Yeah. Just get it out. So we're just inspecting the plants, making sure everything is growing well. And they, it looks good. I'm going to pull this little... I think a weed is anything we don't want to be growing there because it's going to get cold soon. So we'll put that in the compost. But that looks really good. This now, let's go around here. Bria, you hold this and put that in my salad. Okay. Come on around here, Brian. I like salad. I know you love salad. And we're going to go and we're going to look around here and we'll see. We just have a little peas here. Uh, they're not making peas yet, but this is plentiful. This has been growing. This is a uh, Swiss chard. It's been growing for a year. You can look at the big stalks right there. The root system there. That's been growing well. Here's some cabbage, curly mustard. Everything looks good. Just a very few amount of weeds. We're going to, like I said, we're going to leave the netting to the side. So after the few days of rain that we're finally getting and enjoying, we're going to put this cover back on. Okay? Okay. All right. Now let's take a look at the strawberries. Just showing the grow boxes today. Uh, we're going to leave the purse lane. This is purse lane. See this? Yeah. Some people consider it a weed. That isn't. But we're going to leave it in it. I like to let some of it grow because it has more omega-3 in it than salmon which is very very healthy for your heart and your skin okay so these are our strawberries they took a beating uh this summer when we had a lot of hot hot weather but they're coming back okay now we don't need to keep all of this purse laying in here the birds or whatever drop drop the seeds here we're going to pull some of them out so what i want you to do Bria, i want you to pull the little ones up Right here, Brian, you can pull the little one. Keep the big ones like this, because this will be too crowded. It's a big one. Just pull it out. As you see, I'm just pulling some. You're going to get the compost bucket, Brian? Yeah. 
The orange bucket, thank you. That one. It's right over there. The sky's getting really dark. Yeah, yeah. we didn't make it some rain. Okay, Brian, mm. you come over here and work over here. Oh, you're fine. Right here, Brian. Don't pull up the big ones, just the little ones, okay? okay? So that, ladies and gentlemen, is the majority of our grow boxes. Let me go and show you where I have uh, some other food growing outside. Okay. Asparagus growing here, and then we have cold crops growing here. We were able to save the sage in this herb bed and um, rosemary and a few of the petite marigolds survived and well they actually reseeded these are peach tree leaves which is fine from right in front of this bed and this one we didn't cover so we know we need to spray in here because it has um, some little insects flying around but no damage yet okay so that concludes the garden uh, boxes and uh, elevated raised garden beds. Here are some coneflowers, echinacea, and some petunias, and you can see how uh, much the begonias have grown in these two hanging baskets. I moved them from the side garden where the prayer area is over here since it's not so hot now, and um, they're doing well here. But eventually it'll get too cold and we'll bring them into the greenhouse, okay? Let me start right. a tour of the food that's growing outside. And I want to share this $7 uh, Lone Star Blackberry plant that I got at Lowe's Ooh. on sale. Okay, be, be still, be still. See that? Look, look, look. This is what I'm talking about. This is why in one of my Monday night live chats, I told you you have to watch out for these uh, grasshoppers, remember? Yes. Because they love to eat on your leaves. So I barely got it. And so we're going to relocate this one to the witness protection program. Yes. Y'all like that? Yes. Okay, let's go do that Guys, now. I want to share this with you. This came from an inexpensive bed. I got somewhere out. If you email me, I'll tell you where. And it just, the bottom fell out. And um, so I just put it over here in the shade when it was 107 degrees almost every day. And you can see it's doing well. It's moist. Here is some stevia that I let go to seed and some more going to go to seed over there. So we have plenty of seeds to start some in the greenhouse. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'll make a video. I'm just going to come right across here, Brian, with a shovel. And I'm just going to chop it off. And I'm going to take one of those 17 gallon buckets. You want to go get one for me so I can show them real quick? And then I'm going to put some soil on the bottom of that 17-gallon blue bucket. And then we're just going to pick this up and set it on top. And we're going to bring it in the greenhouse before we get freezing temperatures. Okay. And over here, Bria, this is the lemongrass. You want to taste a little bit of it? Yeah. Make sure you don't get no yellow one. Or don't get them, you know, dried out one. Get something fresh. Is this the one dried? Yeah, that's good. You can just take a little piece. Chew it up. Doesn't it smell good? Smell it first. Smell it. It is delicious. It's really good to put into like your stir fries. Lemongrass oil is a very good nourishing oil in skin care, hair care, but it's really good in Asian cooking. But I grow it basically not for the oil or anything because you can't get enough of the essential oil for the, from these two little plants. I buy organic, pure, cold pressed lemon oil. I grow this to repel mosquitoes. It tastes spicy. It's spicy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Brian is back with this bucket. Thank you, Brian. And so you guys can see what we're going to do. Uh, it's got the drainage holes in the bottom. I'll probably put more. Put some soil down there. Hack that off right there where it's not growing here. And we'll make a video and we'll show you how we're going to take this and bring it into the greenhouse, Brian and I. You want to do it today, buddy? You want to do it today? We'll do it today. Okay. All right. Now, let's talk about trees. Right here is my jujube tree. The first, I've had it three years. Guys, it is humongous. It's tall. It's not real wide, but we got a lot of jujubes, and I uh, was able to make jujube butter, and we just had a really good time it's, harvesting jujubes for the very first time. What were you going to say, Maria? It's even taller than any, everybody in this world. <laughs> yeah, taller than everybody is taller than the house. Let's go around. 
Yep. Yeah. See? See the roof? Whoa. Much taller than my house. And then we have our Mexican petunias. Some people call them weeds or invasive. I love them because they attract a lot of pollinators. And you can see all of these are going to bloom real soon. And they smell good too. Here, come on guys. Here is the elderberries. You, you saw a video of Brian and I and Bria harvesting them. We made elderberry juice, which we extracted. Uh, and then we made elderberry syrup. We have enough to last us for a year. Okay? All right. And then we have another elderberry bush right over here. And I think I'm going to take some graphs off of it and just to see what I can do. Guys, here is the other um, brown turkey fig tree. It died back all the way to the ground. But as you can see, it came back real strong. I'm going to take cuttings off of it as well. And, you know, I have a lot of cuttings from the other one on the prayer garden side of the house. Somebody sent me an email or a comment and they wanted to know why I dug up some of the cone flowers because they're perennial. I just did it because they're pretty. These are all dying back. You see here, they'll come back next year. Planted them one time. I never have to plant them again. Beautiful Mexican petunias to bring pollinators to this pear tree. This is where I lost my gala apple tree and I just took one of the pear trees out of a container and put it inside of this hole where the gala apple tree was growing. Now let's step back, Brian. Over here, you see a lot of more Mexican petunia. We have another apple tree here. You can see now the other side of the fence where all of the grapes, Concord grapes and the noble muscadines are growing. This pear tree right here produced a lot of pears for us. And I'm just so thankful because this is a kefir pear. I couldn't remember last night in my video uh, live chat. I couldn't remember the name of it, but looking at it now, I remember it's a kefir pear. And this is one of the trees that we're going to let it go, go grow as tall as it want to. And we let the squirrels get the ones at the top. We put organza bags on this this fruit and we had a really good harvest. There is a video with Brian and Bria and I harvesting them. Now, let's go over here. Again, I have five gallon buckets all around the food forest for us to put what in, guys? <coughs> Bless you. What do we put in the com um, I, I'm just saying it. For compost. Five gallon buckets is going to rain, so we turn them upside down. Here we have uh, society garlic. I'm taking some of the society garlic. I put a lot of it in containers. You see, we have some growing there. We have some growing there where my finger is. We have some, did I show this one yet? Here, over here, and over here, and over here. I'm propagating and I'm gonna put it all around the food forest. Now, in a couple of days, this is the makeshift emergency a bed that Bria and Brian and I did for the okra. Brian, look over there. You can pull that okra uh, plant up and it has some okra on it. I don't think it's too big. We can go ahead and cook that. Yeah. But we're going to dig this up. This is going to be Cheryl's she sh shed right here. And so I uh, just put this for emergency because I'm running out of gardening real estate. And we're going to dig this soil up and we're going to put in two more elevated raised garden beds and I will use the soil. You can hand it to me, son. Good. Shake it out. Remember, you always shake it, the soil out. That's two okra. Good job, Brian. That's good. We can put that in the compost. Let me see. I thought I saw three. Oh, you were right, Maria. Here's one and here's one. You want to get it? Yes. Okay. Let's go back and show more trees over here. We stopped with that apple tree, that pear tree. We have another apple tree in a container, did very well. And we have a Santa Rosa plum tree. This tree right here, I have chairs, guys, all around the food forest for me to sit down when I need to. This tree right here is going to be moved. It's going to be placed right there in that hole where I'm trying, I was trying to dig it out, but it became too too many roots. I got to have a landscaper to do it. I'm going to have that tree put in the ground right there and this one put in the ground right where it is. And I want to share with you that I've been propagating 
uh, Comfrey, Russian Blocking 14. Here's more Society Garlic. I've been propagating a lot of Comfrey, putting it around my fruit tree so I can just chop and drop it for fertilizer. All in here, there was no Comfrey, but I'm putting it, I'm just moving it. Now, right in here, you see this beautiful Comfrey? This is what we're going to be digging up over the weekend. We're going to leave the country over there, but we're going to be digging up most of this. And we're going to be uh, propagating it and starting rooting cuttings for me to send to my uh, subscribers. I'm jumping around a little bit, but I want you all to see that I have comfrey growing in this garden bed where the two pear trees are in and um, I just chop and drop it in here and fertilize that way. Also, right over in here, next to the prayer garden, I have transplanted more comfrey right here where I can just chop and drop it around the mulberry tree and the wild plum tree. Here is a volunteer pecan tree. I found it growing in a citrus tree container maybe four or five years ago, I'm gonna to have to graft another variety um, to it and I plan to do that. And this space right in here, I'm gonna put an almond tree in the future. And those are two pawpaw trees over there that are getting swallowed by the Thompson grapes that I'm trying to kill, but they keep coming back. I have to have somebody to grind those stumps out. Because I don't want them because they keep getting the fungus. And by the way, the Concord grapes are dying back. And I'm going to do a different method of uh, stringing the grapes along. And these two, the Concord grapes had a black rot to it. And I'm going to try one more year to get rid of it. And if I don't, I would take them completely out. It's three vines. And what's so amazing about that black rot is here are the muscadines and the black rot didn't bother them and they're right next to it. So if I can't get rid of the black rot, I'm going to cut my losses, dig up these um, uh, roots, these vines, and put some more muscadines in their place because they are not susceptible to that disease. Anyway, you have pawpaw trees. I think we're gonna make fruit. They uh, bloom this year and it's weird. They put on blooms before they put on leaves. So I think next year we're gonna get fruit. There's one, two, and then one right here. And they are all in the ground. Here are my mimosa trees. They're huge. They grow about 36 inches a year. I started them from seeds and I had to take, um, I guess you call these bungee cords and kind of wrap them up so that cause they were laying too far in the, the pathway. Okay. And I want you all to know that I haven't done my fall cleanup yet because it had been so hot. So I'm behind schedule because I had a, a lot of things to do, but I will get my fall clean up soon. Okay. So I think I, sh oh, right over here is a, Cicera magnolia tree. It's beautiful, guys, when it blooms. It blooms three times a year. And I see buds on it. Let me go closer. I see some buds on it. So it's going to bloom again. And then the freeze will come. Here are two methany plum trees. Uh, they bloomed and put on fruit, but the wind, they weren't strong enough. They didn't survive. But one is in the ground and one is in a container. And as you can see, the girth on the tree, the, the one in the ground is doing much better. I'm going to have that tree also put in the ground uh, this uh, fall slash winter. Here is my Fuyu persimmon. It got real damaged during the uh, freeze of February 2021, 20, but it came back. It produced a lot of fruit. Not as much as it normally does, but the squirrels ravished most of it, but we were able to harvest a little fruit. Right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, right across from this bed that I'm going to dig the soil up is my Yates persimmon. It goes into uh, dormancy sooner than the Fuyu persimmon. The Yates is an American persimmon. And by the way, the Fuyu persimmon right here, such a beautiful tree. It's my favorite shape of the trees. The Asian trees are just so pretty. 
it's uh, self-fertile, meaning it doesn't need a pollinator. And this tree right here, the American Yates persimmon, is also self-fertile. It doesn't need a pollinator. Uh, this is the first year I got a couple pieces of fruit. Well, I think it was one. Oh, goodness. They got me. They got me. There it is right there. Look. I should have took it off, but it's a stringent variety, so it needs to. Let me see if I can find it. Right there. They got me. See that? The squirrels got it. That little piece of fruit was on that tree the other day. They got it. Soon as it started um, turning right, they got it. Brian, you want to pick it up? No, Put it in the compost? No. Just grab it by the organza bag. And then you can wash your hands really good. Wow. And then we're the squirrel is not there now, so don't worry about it. Just pick it up. You can do it. You're a big boy. Okay, guys, we're behind the greenhouse now. Here are two apple trees that did very good for us this year. And then we also have a um, another methylene plum that was growing all the way in the pathway. And Bree is showing you where I trimmed a lot of it off. Okay? All right. And you can see here that we anchored the greenhouse down, but we got tired and we stopped. So I got to finish this. Move Bria. Bria. We got to put those bricks up around here and get some more cement blocks to, to anchor it down. But it's pretty well. It, it held up in the storm. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. All right. But those apple trees are nice. And this plum tree is real tall. Some trees I'm going to let get real tall. Some of them that uh, won't. But these are three that will. And I want to take you back over here and let you look at the Texas Red Star Hibiscus. It's about 20 something feet up high in the sky, still producing flowers for me to gather and dehydrate. Um, but I don't have to do anything special. Just put them in a brown paper bag because they are like tissue paper and they dry out very fast. But these are the seed pods. This is what I'm going to be sending my subscribers uh, after, you know, the cold hits them. But it's loaded with seed pods. Okay, I want you all to see how my cherry trees are doing. Um, I have two of them right here, one in the greenhouse, and they're getting humongous. Uh, and then we have two red haven peach, one on a dwarf stock. I think both of them actually on a dwarf stock. And then we have uh, a sun, sun glow uh, nectarine. I'm probably leaving some trees out, but we got one, two, three, four, five trees in this raised bed. Okay. And I think I'm going to stop right here because I showed you the prayer area the other day and the greenhouse. And you can see uh, two pear trees right here, Asian pears, and then uh, the brown turkey fig. And behind the banana plants, we have a mulberry and a wild plum. Both of those are wild trees that I purchased that are supposed to be uh, grow very well in Texas. Okay. So I hope I share something that will inspire you today. I do have a full organic food forest, and it's a lot of upkeep, but I thoroughly enjoy it. I'm a little behind on cleaning up, but I'm gonna get there. Okay guys, I just wanna share with you, we've just wrapped up that video. This is just gonna be a little extra footage and let you know we did it just in time. And I need to share something with you. Over there are gooseberries I got from Stark Brothers in the two red pots. And right behind it in the green pot is Mexican petunia. And they are all going to go into the greenhouse. As you can hear and see, it's coming down now. And I'm just so appreciative. Hey, so, guys, look at those worms. We're going to spray it with neem oil and water. And we're going to just pick them off. Actually, it's too many to pick off. I'm just going to fold this up and pinch it off. Okay, Brian, okay. I want you to pull this fencing up so I can get in here and get this real good. This is the last bed. You see the wood is deteriorating here? Mm -hmm. We're gonna get three more elevated beds and we're gonna put it in this area. I want you to bend that over. Yeah, see that? Look, see all those worms? The cabbage moths lay those worms in there. 
cabbage worms and they'll just eat up your crop. So I'm gonna go ahead and just snatch them off. Okay, there we go. Now, Bria, you gonna open up the napkin? Open it. Cause we're not gonna put this in the compost. We don't wanna drop any of them. Close it up, good girl. And we're gonna look real good to see if we see any more. But I'm gonna take them off so that I'll know that it's no more damage. Yeah, you don't have to be scared of a little worm. Of course, they would bite me. Worms do not have teeth. No. You wanna, some of them do, like horn worms. Oh. Everybody. Bye, everybody. Is that all you're going to say? How about thanks for watching? Thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching. Goodbye, Bye, everybody. Okay, I hope thanks. I share something that you can use. Remember, check me out on Monday nights and check out my natural skin and hair care line at Lady Cheryl's Products. Dot com. Bye now. Oh, your own, eat your own. It's not all you can do with. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you for watching. See you real soon.